that it's hard to get through or it takes too long. Yeah. And then there are people taking action, so matter into their own hand to mm -hmm. decide what is going to happen with them and their surroundings. Yeah. Uh, thank you for understanding it really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was really amazed by what you guys is, uh, talked and it's, about. And it's, in, you know, really it's, uh, it's quite simple. Yeah. And, and very, uh, to be, uh, I don't know, maybe you can call it anarchistic in the way of, of, of uh, staying so close to these three dogmas. Uh, mm -hmm. Because what, what has happened in, in, in Denmark and maybe the other Scandinavian countries over the years is that the, the authorities have sort of uh, jumped in and, and has taken that rhetoric uh, about talking about civil society. Uh, volunteerism, you know, working with the authorities, um, collaboration, uh, like organizations and, and, and unions working with with the, with the system. So that's all also why we have sort of have invented that word, everyday activists, because mm -hmm. we're not volunteers. We're not. You can be a men, member of that house, and, and and but it's not sort of voluntary volunteering in the traditional sense. Yeah. Um, but I, th I think that's so empowering also because volunteer, just the word volunteer, and it like presupposes, I mean, it's like either you're doing somebody a favor, like you said, and I've found myself in spaces before where people would come and bring something or they're like, I'm putting on a workshop today. And then they're like, but I want this in return. And it's like, but do you really? Like you, it's like, you guys should be thankful that we're doing this. And I'm like, but we're, of course we're thankful, but like you shouldn't be doing this because you want some kind of acknowledgement. Like, you should be doing this because you want to. And if you don't want to, then don't do it. Or like go somewhere else. Yeah. And that's exactly this, because it creates these power relations again of like, pater like of paternalism, of yeah, like yeah. the receiver and the giver. Exactly. And the giver feels, you know, it's like what you have in all these humanitarian organizations <laughs> where it's like, I'm so good. I'm like donating to all these poor starving people. And then you just are like reproducing these power structures essentially of like the weak person or the, you know, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. And what you guys are doing with that actually is like you're challenging that and then challenging it what seems to be in a really constructive way. Yes. Uh, to, to, and then again, to, to really to keep focus on this project, which is Rethink Activism, which is like the, the European cultural project, is just uh, something that sort of tells these stories and, and, and sort of put focus on, on these things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people who are the real heroes in that sense, I. In the book and, and, and all the stories that you've told today, you know, that's exactly that kind of human activism that is that it can, can build things yeah. and can really change it. But I think Cecilia is, is really right about saying uh, the sort of the, the, the downside of the big welfare system. That we're so used to, you know, the system just taking over and, and solving our yeah. problems. But I mean, you. Sort of lull to I know a lot of people. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah. um, I think that there was a proposal that was made by Tina at the beginning, and then it seemed uh, to be connected to a concrete question. So you've, uh, you've engaged in this uh, dialogue using um, Francois's uh, word. But I would like this, uh, this debate to be uh, allowing for uh, several voices to appear to try to prevent uh, dualization yeah. or polarization of the debate. So I'm happy to just keep it going. Uh, anyone can jump in, I just want to... I ju just uh, to write off the coattail, I think uh, anything that you feel like between two people could be discussed like outside of this group yeah. should be done now. Yeah. And stuff that engaging everyone here ought to be doing now because we're probably not gonna be in this situation again for a very long time. Yeah. But so there's this proposal to go back to the contents of the morning, which is something I mentioned earlier. This is uh, definitely a good way to start. And just want to encourage people to uh, either continue this way or uh, maybe take other roads. So uh, yeah, feel free to jump in. Uh, so what you were saying that um, this is like everyday anarchism and this can make a difference and all that uh, activism uh, sorry uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yesterday though um, when we had the Skype conversation 
Uh, I don't remember the the Didak. name of, of Alan. our speaker. Alan and no, 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 the one before. Didak. Didak. Oh. Yes, uh, he said that um, uh, that it's not enough that just being in a squad and like dumpster diving and uh, all this stuff that it's not enough uh, to make a difference and it won't be. Uh, it, we can't change like uh, the system th that way because uh, we're just living in our uh, that that is my interpretation now because we're just living in a bubble and we can't really change all that much. Uh, his answer for it was the uh, the cryptocurrency, which I personally do not agree with, uh, but. Um, I don't know. I, I I'm not having really having a point. I'm just thinking out loud because <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. It just made me think. Maybe yeah. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe we're just like patting each other's shoulders, being like, oh yeah, we're doing stuff. <laughs> uh, maybe 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 we should do something else, or maybe uh, come up with something that would actually make a difference. Yeah, I think. If I could You're just asking it. for a turn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Please do so, and then uh, Christian. No, yeah, I'll just say that for a moment. But I just think, yeah, I just think it's a it's a primary question of the uh, transformative potential of this kind of uh, activity and, and uh, engagement. I mean, well, what is the potential actually? I mean, it, it feels like it's kind of a way of uh, subverting power uh, structures from from below, but I mean. Uh, isn't it too easy to be co-opted by capitalism? I mean, they're interested in all kinds of activity and non-structural yeah, yeah. How are we going to change the global financial capital in this way? Edward, and then Fossil. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd like to talk about another topic, but I'm happy to wait because the debate is emerging in this topic, which is great. Just to um, kind of reply to, to you two, um, I also didn't really like it that um, the presenter on Skype yesterday was a bit disparaging about the squatting movement. I think it's good to be critical about what people are doing, and I can see where he's coming from, but I think it's also, people can get very evangelical about their own projects, and therefore kind of dismiss other things. Yes. And I think what I'm kind of seeing from this uh, meeting is that a lot of people here are doing different things, and we can support each other by linking, but also just letting people go off and do their own things. So, I don't really have a problem what, with what the Skype guy is doing, but I didn't really like it that he was kind of disparaging things that I'm involved with that I think are actually like super important. Great. <clears throat> I think education will do a lot of good. If people don't know, they don't know, and they cannot know the things they don't know. So, and we can use uh, yeah, internet to spread out information at the speed of light. So we should use these tools. So as to create a larger. Yeah, so that was like, uh, what because can we do? And that's yeah, probably education. It, it seems like you know, the, uh, the right has actually succeeded in this, you know, in creating a, a kind of a mass movement, you know, based upon uh, your critique. And it's kind of, a, <laughs> it's a question why, why it's not possible for the left, you know, to create this hmm. grand narrative that people can, and actually, exactly connecting these levels <laughs> And then yeah, and we had a response to the comment. Uh, just yeah, one more the idea. There's two turns of, of okay, words. Yeah, it's good to try to keep uh, debate uh, organized. Right. I, don't, I don't know if you saw if uh, uh, she was first. I saw your, you asking for to speak first. So, um, yeah, this is about something completely different. Okay. okay. <laughs> I have something to read. Yeah, you about that. Yeah, okay. I, I wanted to add on on this not enough point um, no. uh, activism because I was thinking about drawing a parallel of. Uh, climate change uh, talks, yeah, but uh, at some point climate change was like, okay, take shorter showers, you know, and bicycle to work, and that's enough, you're going to contribute. And uh, now I got a question, which is not a conclusion, but maybe activism is on this stage, yeah, like now you stop using plastic, you know, and uh, I don't know, uh, maybe do a little project of your own, and it will be enough, you will be, you know, changing, bringing changes to the big picture. But like climate change talks are evolved now, so everybody knows it's not enough to take short showers and bicycle to work. <laughs> so maybe activism will take that next step too. Okay, okay Francois. 
Uh, yes, it was actually in line with uh, the comment uh, there. That's, I think the problem is quite big and we need to tackle it in different angles. And that's why we have this diversity and diversity is in nature and uh, diverse uh, environment uh, outside, um, yeah, na natural world. So, yeah. They are more resilient and resistant. So I think that's uh, yeah, normal in a way to have this bottom up, uh, top down and in between a way of tackling the yeah, challenges that we are facing today in a, yeah, as a species on spaceship Earth. Yes. I'm really glad that you brought up the uh, climate um, comparison. Um, and I think it's sometimes really easy to get like really disillusioned um, as an activist and kind of in the left alternative scene, like you just said, also like, well, the right has such much stronger arguments or like, they don't have stronger arguments, they're just like fascist about it, so like they're like really, they don't doubt themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, there's so much, like the power comes out of diversity, everyone knows that, it's like the basics of biology. Um, and what you're saying is like, you know, you know, maybe activism has reached just like taking showers, riding bike stage. Um, I think it was somebody that said it during the talk, like every human is universe or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's like, you know, everything in life, it's a combination of various things and, you know, you can take shorter showers, but you also shouldn't fall into some kind of, you know, like, oh, I'm such a good person because I'm taking shorter showers and like recycling um, because like we shouldn't ever be on, like we have to stay aware of the structural problems and the structural problems are that we are all embedded in the system that is called capitalism and it is like inherently <laughs> made to destroy itself and to destroy the planet and to like you know, colonize our feelings and our intim intimacy and our relations with one another. But we can also like subvert that and there's awesome, beautiful projects and initiatives and things happening all over the world where people do do that. And, you know, the people who are like setting up their eco villages in the Pyrenees, they're doing it their way. The people who are making the Bitcoins, the people who are cooking food, you know, anything that you do in your daily life that is outside of the logic of capitalist relations is a form of subverting that system. So, you know, you just got to keep on keeping going, you know, and like, don't lose faith because there's people all over the world who are just, they keep on doing it. Look at the floating cities people. They're just like flailing around on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, you know? I was <laughs> just thinking that all of a sudden the discussion came up on a very high level about climate changes and huge uh, areas that we personally or me in my everyday life, I cannot, well I can make the small changes but yeah, it yeah. doesn't change and should I then stop doing anything in order to better my life or my surroundings or, I mean I can do a lot of small things in my everyday life that better the situation for me and my nearest which may then change for the nearest, for my nearest. Um, I mean, in, in Seattle Samla, we talk about not changing the system because changing the system will it Kill actually you. just fall because yeah. nobody, I mean, then somebody will be opposed to that system. You have to change the people within the system and work well on. I mean, we're, we're very uh, clear that in Seattle Samla, it's not a municipal project or we're not a part of the municipality because then we gain trust from the local environment. But we do work very closely with the municipality because we need to have a dialogue. Yeah. And it's important because a clear tone or a good voice, is, that's yeah. how you get heard. And that's how you can maybe change the bigger things. I don't know. Um, uh, I, I see what you're saying, but um, I'm not saying that we should stop. Uh, definitely not, but I'm asking a question, maybe we should do more. And if so, what is it? I agree, I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a bit similar, but I also agree that doing something is better than doing nothing. That's like out of the question. And actually the discussion is getting like very subtle, because where do you start? Yeah, like um, doing a little bit, doing more, doing a lot, and all these kind of questions. I think they're very crucial, of course, in activism. But um, then why I brought this parallel with climate change because it's very interesting for me to analyze where the shift started because these showers and bicycles um, and recycling, in my opinion, it was kind of propaganda false solutions, yeah, that 
people were told that the best solution is to take a shorter shower and the world will be beautiful again, which is false. And you learn it and it stays in generations and blah, blah, blah. So um, where did the shift happen? Is it because more people came in? Is it because more science? Or what happened that, that the shift from short showers to 100% renewable energies happened, for example? And when is going to happen in activism? Or maybe it's already happening. Mm. Can I just answer really shortly? Or could yes. just come yeah. out really quickly? Yeah, this is like direct response. When you do something like this, you have direct response. No, I'm just thinking that even though you tell people to take a shortest shower, maybe that itself is not changing things, but they create awareness mm -hmm. for that person to think in bigger terms that, okay, there is an issue that I need to handle, and maybe the shower is not enough, but the, the awareness of the issue is in their head. And maybe awareness is just as important as Mm. I think it's, it's like before solution. the action. I, I think like Francois had no, something to say. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. thanks. Thank you, Julian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, and yeah. thank you very much. I think, uh, yeah, I personally think that uh, yeah, uh, creating an alternative to the current uh, market monetary system uh, is the way forward, uh, because then like uh, a tangible alternative, uh, same as the floppy disk, uh, yeah, it's gone now.